Prophet ﷺ said, at the end of time, there would be young men. He said, Hudatha al Asnan, they're young in age. Sufaha al Ahlam, they have empty intellects. La yatajawuz al Iman wa Hanajiruhum. Iman will not go past their throats. They will read the Quran, but it won't go beyond their throats. In other words, they won't understand it. So you find some non Muslims pick up the Quran and they say, this Quran preaches terrorism. No, the Quran is the furthest away from terrorism, but they have not understood the Quran. The Quran has verses of history where history is recorded. They translate it as though those are commands for me and you. Nay, they are not commands. When Allah says, fight those who have fought you, he has addressed it to those people at the time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, take them out, drive them out of the same place that they drove you out from. What was that place? That was Makkah al Mukarramah. The, the Mu'mineen were driven out of Makkah al Mukarramah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is instructing them that now you have the permission to drive them back out of there. So none of us should interpret those verses the way the non Muslims want us to interpret the verses today and in turn call us a bunch of terrorists. May Allah protect us. We are not that. Islam is full of peace and all of us need to understand that. So we must not fall in the trap. We need to know these verses are connected to issues that occurred in history. We need to learn from them. There are people in the world of Islam who do act in a manner that is against Islam, which you can label as terrorism. No doubt in my mind. I know it. You know it. There's no point in denying it, but it is not fair to judge Islam per the actions of some Muslims. Otherwise, all Christians are crusaders, but they're not. And all Jews are Zionists, but they're not. We know that there are groups amongst every religion that are military. But let me tell you in terms of the teachings, we believe that there's war because you have the right to defend yourself. Otherwise, if defending yourself was a crime, then I call on to all the countries in the world to throw their weapons in the ocean. But they won't. They have army and marine and navy. Why? Because someone may attack us. And we have to be ready to defend our soil, our land, our honor, our whatever. Okay, and Islam is what? Islam is a nation like any other nation. And we have equal rights. But you tell me a nation which says to the people, do not kill women, do not kill children, do not kill elderly, do not kill those dedicated to worship. Whatever religion, he's in his church, he's in his temple, whatever he may be, don't approach them. Do not burn a tree, do not destroy a house, do not kill an animal, do not betray, do not act treacherously. Which nation on earth applies these in their warfare? None. They bomb milk factories, they bomb children, they bomb women right before our eyes. And they're not terrorists, subhanAllah. They're not. We are the terrorists. Some Muslims misrepresenting Islam through violent acts such as going to a supermarket or a train station and bombing themselves in the name of Allah, we say Islam is the first to say this is prohibited. First, you cannot commit suicide. Second, you cannot kill innocent civilians. What Islam permits is that if the two armies meet, like armies are meeting all the time, then you have the right to do what you have to do on the battlefield. People buying vegetables to have lunch are not included. So to kill them in the name of Allah is oppression. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا يزال المسلم في فسحة من دينه ما لم يصب دما حراما. The believer will remain within the margins of his religion unless he spills blood illegally. Once he kills one innocent soul, he will be held responsible by Allah and it may be the reason he will enter the hellfire.